You know, this is the first video that I've ever created, right? Ever worked on before for this YouTube channel where I was legitimately concerned that things could go catastrophically wrong. What's up YouTube, Jason here with Bite My Bits. And yes, this is another sponsored video by Norton, but I think you might like this one. So I did the first video, you can check out the cards above, where I just highlighted some of the different features that the Norton Core had to offer. The thing with that though is that Norton is touting a bunch of security features and they wanted people to know what it has to offer. And I've kind of sort of felt the need to test it. So here we are. Now, first I wanted to do some basic tests. I just wanted to double check, make sure some of the features were working, but I ended up making it a little bit more complicated than what I initially thought I would. And that's where things ran the possibility of going catastrophically wrong. Spoiler alert, I kind of sort of got a virus. Now, a couple of the main security features that the Norton Core is saying it offers is deep packet inspection and network intrusion detection. Basically, on one end, it, it protects you from you know incoming files. It, it filters them out before it makes it to your computer. And on the other end, not only does it you know close a bunch of ports and kind of secure your network overall, uh, but it also detects outgoing communications that would you know be coming from things like trojans or ransomwares, you know that sort of thing. So these are two security features that you know, the Norton Core is using as a selling point that I find interesting. Now, I could have gone the easy route and, and there's a website out there. I think it's eicar.org. It, it's like a demo, you know, virus test downloading thing. It, it's a very simple way to test something like this. But I really, I, I didn't like that. And if you guys have watched my YouTube channel before, you know that sometimes I overcomplicate things just because I can. Sometimes because I don't understand it and I want to try to understand it and or want people to laugh at me when I don't understand it. But either way. So that brings me to the catastrophic failure topic of the day, and that is downloading a vault full of viruses. Anything from ransomware, Trojans, malware, I mean, just a whole slew of different types of viruses, of course, encrypted and all, you know, compressed in their own little files, but nonetheless, just a large folder full of potential disappointment for me. And literally, literally going through these viruses, extracting them, you know, messing around with it. I was literally like palm sweaty when I was doing this. And yes, I understand that there are certain ways that you could, you know, manipulate or mess with these different viruses that, you know, you could use to protect yourself, things like virtual machines or just, you know, throw away PCs, etc. But no one's ever called me super smart. And I decided to download all of these viruses on my main computer uh, with the full intention of not, you know, running them and go through and extract and play around with them and, and you know basically just see what they're all about. Anyways, the point was is that I wanted to basically test these viruses being downloaded to a dummy computer uh, or actually my test Plex Media server computer and I wanted to see if the Norton Core would block it and if so, what that looked like on the user's end, both on the PC trying to download it and on the Norton Core app itself. So I ended up going through a bunch of different viruses and, and try to find ones that I was you know, somewhat familiar with, maybe I've heard of before or whatever, and I actually uploaded those to my own website, bitemybits.com. And no, you cannot go there now and view them. They were literally up there for like you know five minutes just for me to test it and I deleted them. So I uploaded them to my website. I had my dummy PC, my Plex Media Server test PC behind the Norton Core. Uh, I navigated to that test website that had a directory of those uploaded files, and I just tried to download it. I can't remember exactly how many I tried, but it was in the realm of like five to 10 different viruses, ranging from ransomware to Trojans, malware, et cetera. And for each one, it would actually allow you to initiate the download. But then when you get just a little bit into it, Norton Core just picks up that it's a virus, it cuts you off, and that's it. That file, that URL specifically, is blocked. And blocked is actually different from scanning because when something like that gets blocked on the Norton router, you actually get a little screen that says, no, this is you know a malicious website link versus the first time when you download it, it actually lets you start to download it, but then cuts you off. Now, of course, this isn't like you know a quality testing of the feature. There's no way that I can go through and test all the millions of different viruses out there. This is more of a, a proof of concept, just to demonstrate. Now, the deep packet inspection does have a few levels. You could either A, run it to where it scans everything, or B, you can run it to where it only scans things that are not considered safe by Norton. And I definitely recommend the latter here because if you're using Norton's whitelist of you know server 
servers and websites that are safe for you to browse, uh, it's going to allow you to have a faster web experience overall. And believe me, there is a huge change in speed. This is, in my opinion, kind of a drawback to the entire feature. However, it is still completely understandable. And that is because of the scanning, because of what it has to do, you drastically lose speed overall for your incoming traffic. Now, some of you might not ever notice this if you don't have that fast of an internet connection as it is. But somebody like me, I ran the speed test, I was able to get 337 megabits per second download unfiltered. But once I switch that over to deep packet inspection, I get cut off at right around 65 to 66 megabits per second. So as you can see, if you did use this router in its fullest protection mode and you were constantly, you know, filtering every website or every download that you were looking at, it could slow you down. So it's just kind of one of those things you have to balance, you know, do you want more speed or do you want more security? But anyways, moving on to me getting infected by a Trojan virus, we have network intrusion detection. So yes, the Norton Core can scan incoming traffic and you know identify and block certain malicious content from ever reaching a PC, and that's all and well. But what I was curious about is what exactly does it look like from you know the user standpoint if you were to get infected by something that would try to communicate with the outside world. So I fired up a dummy PC. It's a little PC stick I have, and it has a fresh copy of Windows 10 on it, no personal information on it. What whatsoever, and I decided to infect it with a Trojan. Now the Trojan is called, I might pronounce this wrong, Stab Unique. Now I picked this Trojan for a reason. You know, once it runs on a PC, it does some, you know, data collection, and then it bundles all that up and sends it up to a mothership. And I would assume, of course, from there, you know, once it's communicated, once that Trojan, that back door is open, you know, who knows what they could do to your computer afterwards. But the point here is that it is trying to make an outside connection, and it's not just, you know, doing things to your computer and staying silent in the background. So after booting into this fresh Windows 10, disabling the Defender, the firewall, and just, you know, everything making it just completely susceptible to any virus that I wanted to throw at it, I ran the Trojan. There was a little bit of a delay, kind of made me think it wasn't working, but then of course, the file disappeared. Now, the whole time that this was going down, I was looking at the Norton Core app just to see if any you know new threats popped up in the notifications. Going into the notifications, I was able to see that it did block known websites that this Trojan was known for connecting to, communicating with, and you know transmitting user data to. So it intercepted that, blocked it, and sent me a notification. And I don't know if I can stress this enough, but this, this entire video, this entire testing thing is not a test to measure its effectiveness. It's more of a demonstration. A demonstration in the sense of letting people know what is available out there to protect their friends or family members. And basically saying this, the Norton Core, it might not be for everybody out there, especially if you have the technical skill and or the time to make your own solution to protect your family. And if you do, more power to you. In fact, I'm going down this very same route myself. It's a very interesting route, but it is kind of a learning curve. So it's just, it's a little bit more complicated than plugging in a new router and setting it up via your phone. Yeah, okay, a lot a bit more complicated than doing that. That's aside the point. However, for demonstration purposes, showing that the Norton Core being binded with an app, an, an administrator that's always gonna have their phone on them, able to get notifications, able to take immediate action, just having that control literally in your pocket all the time, being able to see when threats are blocked, be it incoming or outgoing connections, and basically give you the power in your hands to know what's going on. And when you combined all that with the really easy to use parental controls, I think that it just, it puts a lot of power into somebody's hands who maybe didn't know how to put that kind of power in their hands in the first place. So before I close this video, guys, I, I just want to say this one thing. All I did was test the Norton Core. I did not test the Norton antivirus software. And I wanted to specify that because on the test PC, the one that I used to infect myself with a Trojan, the only reason why it was able to infect itself with a Trojan is because I had no antivirus installed. And while the Norton Core itself is strong, there are some limitations to what it can do to protect your internal network. Work. Primary example, SSL traffic or secured websites. If there's a secure connection, it's encrypted, Norton Core can't read it. I mean, you're just gonna run into issues where it's not gonna be able to view the data, thus not being able to block it. But that's where the Norton Core router and the Norton Core antivirus software work well together. Norton Core kind of being your first line of defense, but just in case you're on a secure website and it doesn't have an ability to scan it, Norton Antivirus can jump in and save the day. 
So guys, I look forward to reading some of the comments or questions that you might have for me in the comments section below. Of course, if you do want more information on the Norton Core router, links are in the description. But as always, like and subscribe below and have a good day.